let's move on to Pascal's triangle. So Pascal is a pretty famous mathematician back, I believe, in the 1400s in France. So his triangle is actually interesting because we can write it as a, um, as a triangle that is isosceles. So here's how it starts. We start with a 1 and then in a 1 and a 1. Okay, we start with a 1 here. And then in the middle we have a 2 and then a 1. So Pascal's triangle always starts with 1. So we have a 1 and a 3 and a 3 and another 1. Okay, we have a 1 here and a 4 and a 6 and a 4 and then, you know, they're always bookcased with 1s. Okay, and then this is the last row I'm going to do. We have a 1, a 5, a 10, a 10, a 5, and then our bookcase is one. So have you figured out the pattern yet? So make sure you have this triangle written down in your notes because you're going to be using it a lot this year. So one plus one equals two. All right, two plus one is three, and two plus one is three. So this is how we're getting those inside numbers, okay? We're looking at, in this case, if we drew little arrows up to these, we would say 1 plus 3 is 4, 3 plus 3 is 6, and then 3 plus 1 is 4 again. Okay? And then we have 1 plus 4 is 5, 4 plus 6 is 10, and so on. Okay, so this is how we would, this is how we know the values on the triangle. So let's do the next row together. Okay? So you try to guess, we're going to fill in here, we start with a 1, what comes next? 6, that's right. Then we have 15, 20, 15, 6, and then our bookcase of 1, okay? So what I want you to look at now is I want you to look at the numbers that have um, every other row. So let's look at this row and this row. What do you notice about these two rows that are different than, say, this row, and this row, and this row? If you said they both have numbers that repeat, you're right. This row has two threes. This row has two tens. Okay? So your odd rows, okay, and when I say odd, we're looking at, we have a three here. We have a 4, that's even. We have a 5 here. We have a 6, that's even. Row 7 is going to have two matching numbers again. So your odd rows have two of the same numbers in the middle. Okay, so I think that's something interesting about this triangle as well. All right, so one other thing that's really important about this triangle is when we're talking about it, we're talking about it... Um, in terms of rows, so we always start Pascal's triangle with row zero, row one, row two, row three, and so on. What you're going to notice is the row number matches the number to the right of the first one and also to the left. So this is row four. To the right of the one is a 4, to the left of the other one is a 4. That's how you know what your row number is, okay? Position numbers, so position numbers start in much of the same way. So position numbers, if I take this row here, I'm going to take this and pull it out. We have 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1. So this is position, and I'm just going to use P for position, position 0. This is position or term 1 position or term two, it depends, you can say whatever you want, position or term three, uh, position or term four, okay, I'm really, my pen is not working very well, and position or term five, okay, so what you'll notice is your row number is five, and the number of positions you have has to match that row number, so I have five positions here, so if I said row six, position or term Four, what I'm talking about is zero, one, two, three, four. So the value of row six, position four, is 15. 
All right, so that is the new content. So let's go ahead and um, put this into practice. So we're going to start with Pascal's uh, with Pascal's triangle. Okay. So the first thing we're going to look at is his notation. All right. So this is um, I've expanded Pascal's triangle a little bit to um, look like the Leaning Tower of Pascal's triangle. So it's a little crooked through seven rows so I can show you his notation. So the first thing I want you to keep in mind is when we write his notation, we always start with the row number and then the position number, okay? And we write this in parentheses. And this equals some value on the triangle. Okay, so um, in our textbook, the row number uh, the variable we use to represent the row number is n. The variable we use to represent the position number is r. Okay, so um, what we want to do is we want to find some value when we have an n value and an r value. So let's say our n value is 7 and our r value is 4. So we're going to find something, a value that resides in row 7 and has the position of 4. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at row 7. That's this row right here. So I know it's row 7 without having to count because I have 7 right next to my 1's. Okay. So we're going to now count in four positions, remembering that we start at position 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So um, um, position, or row 7, position 4 has a value of 35. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do 5. 3. Okay. So this means I'm going to be looking at row 5. Again, the way I tell it's row 5 is I look for the row that has 5 to the left and the right of the 1, which would be this one. Okay. And I'm looking for the third position. So here we go. Position 0, position 1, position 2, position 3. So that's 10. All right, what happens if I asked you to find um, something that looks like this? We'll say row 2, position 0, or row 2, position 2. Well, you've noticed that I've made them equal to each other. So let's look at row 2. Here's position 0, and here's position 2. What you should notice is any time I have a position of 0 or a position of, of um, the last term, and I can always tell it's the last term because it's row 2 and the position number matches that row number because they are like they have to be the same, right, for it to be the last term, I'm going to have the same value, okay? And in this case, it equals 1, okay? If I have row 4 position 0, what's going to be equal to that, which is also going to be 1? it's going to be row 4, position 4, okay? If I have row 5, position 0, what's well going to be equal to that? Hopefully by now you're saying 5, position 5, all right? There are a few other things that are also equal on these, okay? So what happens if I say that I'm looking at row 3, position 1? Okay. Well, the number directly right of the 1 is always the same as the number directly left of the last one. So 1 less than the row number is always equal to, to the first position. Okay. So that means if I have row 3, 1 less than the row number is position 2, 
And that means that these are going to be equal, and in this case they equal 3, because they'll always equal the row number, okay? If I have row 6, position 1, that's going to be equal to row 6, 1 less than the row number is 5, position 5, and that's going to equal 6. Okay, so let's just test. Here's position 1 on row 6, 2, 3, 4, 5. See, they're the same. What you should notice is, as uh, Pascal's triangle is, um, it's symmetrical. So if you go in one way, and you go in the opposite way, you end up with the same numbers. If you were to cut it in half and overlay it on each other, with the exception of these even rows, there's no symmetry here, but the numbers to the right and to the left are symmetrical. All right, and I should note really quickly that I know that I said Blaise Pascal was a mathematician in the 14th century, but it's actually the 17th century, so I don't want to mislead you on that. All right, that is all for today. So let's have a look. Um, let's have a look back at our learning targets and make sure that we've hit everything. So, can you explain the meaning of the word factorial in your own words? Okay. I think that if you look at the definition and you tried to, I think that you could. So maybe that would be something good to do after this video. Can you evaluate factorials? So if I said, what's the value of 8 factorial, could you find it? If I said, what's the value of 3 factorial divided by 2 factorial, could you find it? If we're given products, can we write those in terms of factorials? We did that including variables. And then can we construct Pascal's triangle, interpret and write its notation, and find the values on the triangle using the notation? That is what we just did. So we've hit all of these learning targets. So at this point, I would suggest that you stop. Oh, well, you're gonna, the video is over, obviously, in just a second. But if there are things you have questions on that maybe weren't clear, I would suggest that you jot those questions down now in your notes. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night.